First of all, thanks a lot to Reality NXT uh, for giving us this platform and also uh, opportunity to be a part of the top 12. Uh, so we are Pace Robotics uh, and we are trying to build the future of building uh, through multitasking robots for advanced construction tasks. Uh, we are backed by Pidlight Ventures and incubated with uh, Sign IIT Bombay. So we have built India's first, as of now, only robot for the entire wall and ceiling finishing process uh, done with the robot. Uh, so construction process are very labor intensive. Uh, and the biggest problem today is that this labor is an acute shortage. So we are trying to uh, use robots uh, to do more work with available uh, labor. And if you look at what kind of innovations have happened in construction over the past two decades, uh, most of them have focused on the structural phase of construction. So even uh, be it precast, prefab technologies, aluminum-based formwork system, or even recent 3D printing technology that has come up. Uh, so today, if you look at buildings, a 15 storage structure can be raised in a matter of six months. But the time taken to complete it and make it occupant ready is somewhere between 12 to 18 months, which was the same case, I would say, around 20 years back as well. And this is the phase where you have at least nine or 10 different contractors working together. Uh, collaboration issues, uh, interdependencies lead to several delays and quality issues as well. Uh, so we found this as an opportunity for robots to be deployed at site and to actually make a difference. So what we are building uh, is a first of its kind platform, first of its kind platform which is modular and autonomous in nature uh, and is focused on construction, under construction buildings as well. So uh, the platform we are building, it has three essential parts, starting off with an intelligent structure that can reach any part of wall, floor or ceiling, a navigation system that can um, autonomous, semi-autonomously navigate within an under construction building and an information system which can understand the feature of the building. Where is a door? Where is a window? Also give you a feedback on the quality of work, progress of work, etc. The biggest benefit that we see here is what we call skill standardization. So today, a painting is a different unique skill. Plaster is a different unique skill. Flooring is a different unique skill. You need three kinds of labors to do that work. With robot, all you need is an operator. The same operator can do any number of tasks which the robot can perform. We are starting off with a robot for wall and ceiling finishing. We are building that in two phases. First is fine putty sanding and paint, which is the final three tasks that is done on the wall and ceiling. We are also working on plastering and coarse putty, which is still under development. Uh, unfortunately, I'm uh, unable to play the video here. Would love to show you the video once we are done. Uh, so I'll try to explain it the best way possible. So if we place the robot to that corner of the wall, it will move on itself from this corner to that corner. Uh, as it moves, it will spray the paint or putty material on the wall. It will identify door and windows and avoid spraying in that area. It can align itself parallel to the wall to maintain quality. Uh, also think of it like a vacuum cleaner model. As soon as painting is done, you remove the nozzle and connect a, a sanding machine. It will do the same process for sanding. Uh, while sanding is done, there are sensors on board to ensure the level is maintained and you get a, a fully level surface to do the final painting on it. Uh, the biggest benefit is in terms of productivity improvement. Uh, today, to complete 50,000 square feet a month, you would need 12 people. It will cost you around 3 lakh rupees. With the robot, uh, you would need only 2 people. That is around 80% reduction in your manpower requirement. And the cost comes down close to 90,000. So 2 lakh per month is what you would end up saving if you were to do 50,000 square feet of work a month. Uh, these are direct savings. There are indirect benefits in terms of reduced manpower handling and supervision cost, uh, lesser reworks, etc. This has been our journey. We started off in July 2020, uh, and when we built a prototype of close to five feet high, uh, and we have gone through four major design iterations before reaching where we are today. Recently in February, we received our first purchase order from Shapurji Group. Uh, we are planning to deliver that towards the end of this year. Uh, so in addition to that, we have also uh, done demos with Shoba and Godri recently in the month of July and August. Earlier, we have worked with companies like, uh, in fact, Starworth, not Purvankara, uh, Total Environment, LNT, and Concord, we did a paid pilot. Most of these were demos and uh, pilots at their sites. Uh, we have also received interest from companies like Mahindra LifeSpace, Tata Realty. Uh, because of logistical issues with projects not being available in Bangalore, we were unable to do pilots with them as of now. Uh, we have looked at the market opportunity, looking at what is spent on labor today. So around 1.1 billion is what uh, is spent on the wall finishing uh, labor itself. So if you look at what is built in top eight metros in India, we have an opportunity to deploy around 4,500 robots. But if you go to the Middle East market, that opportunity is around 12,000 robots. And the price premium also gives you a benefit of around 2.5 to 3x times what we can get in India. 
but we are also looking at the entire building finishes as a market where the same product with um, additional fittings we can start getting into flooring any kind of grinding or uh, uh, grinding or drilling works that are happening on wall or ceiling etc even external painting and plastering is something which we are looking into over a period of 5 to 10 years so then the market goes from 11 billion to around 120 120 billion globally Uh, how we plan to get into market starting off with direct sales uh, so this is where we are currently looking at working with different developers uh, who are keenly interested in exploring robotics and other technologies to reduce the labor power its labor requirements at site uh, and some of the discussions are happening with these companies uh, but to distribute it further to reach to the larger mass of developers as well as subcontractors contractors we are looking at a lease or service based partnership model already in talks with companies like berger paints uh, saint gobain etc who can be a single window to reach out to the large applicator network we have eventually we also feel there is an opportunity for micro entrepreneurship where if you take an example of jcb or or cranes that are being bought by individuals and leased out to uh, projects nearby so similar opportunities can come up with robots where today people are not getting into construction because getting labor is a challenge with robots you have to get 80% lesser labor so that could bring in more people into construction so eventually probably 2 to 3 years later down the line we are looking at uh, b2c also as a model of getting into market uh, globally there are uh, three other uh, similar products available okibo is an israeli company catering entire europe canvas is a us company and the fang is a chinese company while there are differences in terms of what is a wall and ceiling finishing in each of these markets uh in terms of the productivity benefits all these companies are very similar uh how we are different from them is being uh from india and working for an indian construction worker uh has helped us uh, reduce the size weight also made uh, made it operationally very easy a non technical operator can today operate the robot okay first of all thank you uh i just have one question yeah. uh, robots being physical and slightly larger in nature okay. while it appears very lucrative from the customer lens uh but for you to manage them i'm sure it is maintenance extensive uh, you know and uh there are some operational challenges also that i can see especially in the under construction sites right how do you manage that how right. do you manage so, your uh, expenses and the operational so challenges? in terms of expenses so we are still figuring that out what is the maintenance expenses what our expectation is around 5 to 10% of the cost would have to be spent annually on as maintenance expenses but we have even considering that over a period of 5 to 7 years which we are considering as lifetime that you have not considered in your uh, pricing model i uh, mean we have model. considered that but it is an assumption because we haven't done a long term deployment so mm-hmm. assumption based on what are the parts we are using and what is the promise from the manufacturer of the part so we haven't done a long term deployment yet to understand uh, what is getting degraded fast where are we having issues uh, what has like been that. your largest tenure uh, so any project we have done only one pilot of over 5000 square feet so we did a paid pilot of 7000 and as of now we are in a project with godrej in uh, bangalore in terms of duration uh, that was 3 month but 3 month included a lot of r&d efforts from our side as well okay. so uh, in terms of uh, the kind of development or buildings that you can apply this to is it universal or does it require standard specifications currently we have started with a focus on residential apartments okay uh, and so which change a lot in terms of configuration sizes rooms height yes, with everything but height wise somewhere we could say 3 meter would be a standard height for at least 90% of residential buildings so right. we have set it like that and also the door sizes uh, room sizes we also know that probably 3 to 3 meter would be the smallest bedroom that is available Uh, i mean that is there in a residential apartment so right. uh, we have considered all that and started off with residential but if you are saying commercial then we'll have to build the structure differently so for a 4 meter the size of the base increases from what it is today yeah, because the use case is good there is a lot of uh, problems now right standardizing plaster and that kind of stuff yes. because that is what the touch and feel is there for the customer yes, yes so okay. so how do you deal with the uh, say for example you said you need only two people but you'll actually need finishers also right all the edges door frames windows right. corners right. cut corner if you understand right uh-huh. so currently what is happening is we are stopping the sanding process at 5 cm from all edges okay. the reason being the sanding is a round machine Uh, and the round machine when it reaches the edge you are not getting the straight edge so that is something which we are solving with an addition uh, kind of finding a tool that can give you a straight edge uh, in another 4 to 5 months we will be able to solve that 
but this is a solved problem in like you said your competition is already there in the western world and all that they have also not the benefit which they have is the labor cost is so high there right. that even if you are doing only 40% of work with robots it right. still makes a lot of economic sense